Hello viewers, this is your history teacher, teacher Roger Michira, ready to take you through history and government, form 4, and the topic we are discussing is international organizations. Now we have looked at the League of Nations, we have looked at the uh, United, United, uh, United Nations organization, and now today we'll get to Commonwealth. That is also another international organization. And now the channel you are watching is Elimu TV, where we always watch and learn. Welcome class and let us learn. Now, what do we expect by the end of the lesson? Class, we expect that we are able to name the members of Commonwealth and also get to discuss how the Commonwealth was formed, that is, the formation of the Commonwealth. Now, with, without wasting much time, let us go to this, the Commonwealth, right? Now, what is this Commonwealth? So we must get to understand that this is a voluntary association of independent states. Right now, these states were formerly part of the British Empire. Right, for example, colonies or domains. For example, Kenya, Uganda, Egypt, right, Nigeria. Good. Now, those were uh, those are independent states and were formerly part of the British Empire. Now, how many members are in Commonwealth? Right. So, Commonwealth is an association of 54 sovereign countries around the world. However, more countries are joining the Commonwealth. Now, class, can you get to look at the origin of the Commonwealth? Where do we trace its origin to? And one thing you must note that it is traced back to the British Empire, right? Now, it comprises mostly of the British protectorates. I've given you an example of uh, Kenya, Uganda, the British colonies and domains, which include Australia, we have got New Zealand, we have got Canada, we have got uh, Newfoundland, we have got Irish Free State, and finally, South Africa. Now, those, comp those comprises of the British protectorates, the colonies, and also the domains. However, one, uh, another thing we must get to know is that it was launched formally, but it does not have a constitution, right? Unlike uh, the United Nations that had principles, right? Had charters. For the, for the Commonwealth, it was launched, but it didn't have a constitution. And again, it began with the uh, publication of the, of the Duham Report of 1839. Now, after the publication of the Duham Report of 1839, then the committee chaired by Lord uh, Pava, of the, 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 the Prime Minister of Canada, prepared the report. When he prepared the report in 1931, he incorporated the statue of Westminster, that is in the year 19. That one. Now the statute stated that no act of the British Parliament could by law of any domain unless the domain parliament itself agreed to pass it. Meaning unless the domain uh, the parliament agreed to pass the domain, no other British Parliament could by law pass the domain. And also what what other thing did the, the domain state? The statute defined the UK and the Dominion of Canada, New Zealand, Austria, Austria, and Ottoman communities with the British Empire. Now it defined those those the, the UK domain, the Canada, the New Zealand, Austria as the Ottoman communities with the British Empire. And also, finally, one thing we learn about the origin is that all were to be equal in statute, status, and not subordinate to one another. So all members of the Commonwealth are equal and none is subordinate to one another <laughs> and again can now get look at membership again remember in the introduction we briefly looked at the me membership now here let us get detailed information on the membership one thing we learned that it is a unique family of 54 developed and developing countries so in these 54 we have the developing and also the developed countries on addition to that each Commonwealth state chooses on its free will to become a member of Commonwealth. So if Kenya chooses to withdraw from Commonwealth, right, it's free. If it, it, it wishes to join Commonwealth, it's also free, right? So it is all about free will, right? Now, modern Commonwealth has also allowed membership from independent and British colonies. Remember, first we said that most it comprises of the British colonies and protectorates. But again, it, uh, it has opened its doors for those who are non-British, colonies to join Commonwealth. For example, Mozambique, Cameroon, and Togo have joined. Remember, these were French colon uh, protectorates. Now, the members are categorized into four categories, right? One, we have the Britain and her dominions, for example, Canada, Austria, and New Zealand. 
Then we've got the African nations, the Asian nations, the islands from Caribbean, Pacific, and Mediter Mediterranean. Now, class, let us have at this map, right? Those that are shown in red, those are the Commonwealth members. Now, if you get to look in Africa, we have Kenya, Uganda there, right? We have got Egypt, we have got Nigeria, we have got in West Africa, Cameroon, Togo, right? Go to, the, go to Canada, right? Go to the islands of Caribbean, you see that? Now, if you clearly get to trace that, 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 that map, you can clearly get to state all the Commonwealth members using our map we have already stated. Now, having said that class, having said that class, I have an assignment for you. Can you get to state those other members of the Commonwealth that we have not mentioned, right? We have just mentioned a few using our map. Now, can you get to state those other members of the Commonwealth that we have not stated? And also, for your reference, can you get to use Evolving World History and the Government book for the seventh edition, right? That is the uh, reference book that we're going to use. And as always, for more videos, for more lessons, kindly get to join Elimu TV on YouTube where we get to watch and learn. Thank you and see you in the next class.